goals feel like shit. Goals feel like I'm telling myself, I'm not worthy now, but if I could do this, then I'd be worthy. But the problem is once you get there for anyone who's ever achieved a goal, how does it feel? It feels like the rug got pulled again, doesn't it? Now it's like, oh, well, that's okay. All right, well, let's move the goalposts and try it again. Then I'll feel worthy. But instead of putting that goalpost way out there outside of me, and now I need to try to become something I'm not, which is an illusion, you could focus on, okay, what does the future me has normalized $5 million in the bank account? And that is living this life that I probably aspire for. What skill sets do they have? What energy do they bring into a room? How do they treat themselves? How do they carry themselves? What is their information diet? Who do they surround themselves with? What is their internal state like? Wealth is a an embodiment. It is a journey and it is a process. process. Building cash flow is absolutely essential if you're going to achieve financial freedom. There's just no way around it. And in order to help you achieve this, we've created an absolutely free resource, Conscious Cash Flow, which is an entrepreneurship masterclass series where we show you how to approach money, business, and entrepreneurship the correct way way in order to generate a consistent flow of money coming in month after month doing what you absolutely love to do if you're tired of being a consumer plugged into the matrix and you're ready to break out of that mindset and paradigm and start becoming a producer in life check out the link in the description below to gain access to this absolutely free offer we would love to see you inside much love Hey, Jeremy, as I've moved along with the curriculum and interacting in this space, I've realized that I've been falling into old patterns of doing and perfectionism to quote unquote succeed. This has especially been the case with crypto as I have a big learning curve with this. These are patterns that from an emotional and spiritual level, I have been working on shifting for the last several years. Can you speak to maintaining the balance between learning a lot of new material and staying grounded? This is a mindset question for sure. Great question. So. You guys know how I'm always reiterating that wealth is spiritual and that that can mean so many different things. One of its meanings is alluding to this notion that most of us are focusing on something outside of ourselves, on this external result that eventually when we get blank, then we will be wealthy. Whereas what I would recommend would be to invert that and reframe what wealth and what success actually is. The societal definition would be that wealth is an end result, insert blank. It's an amount of commas in your bank account, an amount of cars, an amount of houses, an amount of cash flow, whatever. I would argue that wealth is a an embodiment, it is a journey, and it is a process. And if you can reframe away from an external end result and you can understand that there is no finish line and that there is no end result outside of you that all of this is just a game that your soul is choosing to play right now to learn more about itself i think number one that reframes things in a lot healthier of a way to where you're not feeling less than until i'm at blank right? Or until I achieve blank, I'm less than. That's why I'm not a fan of goals. I don't set goals. I've gotten here not setting goals, guys, just so you understand. Goals feel like shit. Goals feel like I'm telling myself, I'm not worthy now, but if I could do this, then I'd be worthy. But the problem is once you get there for anyone who's ever achieved a goal, how does it feel? It feels like the rug got pulled again, doesn't it? Now it's like, oh, well, that's okay. All right, well, let's move the goalposts and try it again, then I'll feel worthy. It's a, it's a scam, it's a hoax. So I've just learned to focus on the process. What does that mean? That means that whether you're doing or being, whether you're going left, right, up or down, whether you're resting or sprinting, whether you're planting seeds or in a season of harvest, it is all the same thing. These kind of reframes or knowings can help a lot with perfectionism because implied in perfectionism 
is that there is such thing as a perfect way to do something, which only comes when we're operating under the energetics of there being this end result that we need. Therefore, we need to shift ourselves into something that we're not to try to get this thing that's outside of us. But what if you already are that and you already have that? and you're just playing this game. Your soul is just playing this funny game where you forgot you already have it. And it might take you a year, it might take you a decade, but eventually you'll remember that you always were that. And there's no such thing as becoming more. It's physically impossible. You already are. I know that's a pretty strange answer, <laughs> but that's part of what keeps me grounded in such a masculine pursuit someone who has generally pretty dominant masculine energy who can easily also get caught up in achievement games status games doing all of the time it's holding those two polar opposites at the same time in juxtaposition it's that you can do these 3d things it doesn't make you a non-spiritual person it doesn't mean you're regressing it doesn't mean you're low vibration. It is all God experiencing itself. The only reason you're even able to judge what you're doing is because you happen to have egoic faculties. Taking some of these more meta perspectives can sometimes help with being less critical of yourself. And I will say there's nuance to this because there's a fine line between just bypassing, going, okay, well then everything is God. So I'm gonna shoot up heroin and kill people. There's a fine line, right? Um, there is such thing as karma. There is such thing as what is your soul here to do? There's all these things. Um, so obviously that's not an, an end all be all fix. But if you're on a positive path and you're judging yourself when you're in seasons of got to get shit done, happens to me too. Um, but those are some of the those are some of the perspectives that help me. I could go into you know practices and all that. That's probably what you guys want me to do. But um, practices are just that, they're practicing. They're for practicing. But what if you just learn to live the game? You don't necessarily always need to practice the game. You could also make a mindset switch in and live the game, which means that when the game is going a little bit differently from how you're used to or how you thought it was gonna go, rather than pausing it, being like, I need to go back to my to practice mode, you could learn to reframe the game, you could learn to love the game itself, the process. And I see a few different questions. So maybe what I'm saying about goals is confusing to some of you. What do you aim for without a goal? So think of it like this. <clears throat> you can focus on achieving a certain goal outcome or external result, or you can focus on being the absolute best you can in an embodiment sense and defining success based on the moment to moment, day to day obsession of a process. So let's extrapolate that out to be less confusing. One person looks at it and says, okay, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be. When I have $5 million in the bank, then I'm a success. And so that's when perfectionism is going to kick in because it's a hell of an effective strategy to shame and guilt yourself into achievement. It's how most of us were parented. It definitely was how I was parented. That's route A, you can do that. It works, it's just exhausting, right? I'm sure who can relate I would agree. It's an exhausting strategy. It's not that it doesn't work, it just doesn't feel great. It's maybe there's a better way. And then there's this other path that says, okay, cool. So maybe $5 million would be valuable. I could do all these different things. I could make a real impact. I could to my community and causes I believe in and wouldn't have to worry about X, Y, and Z and government couldn't control me and blah, blah, blah. But instead of putting that goalpost way out there outside of me, and now I need to try to become something I'm not, which is an illusion, you could focus on, okay, what does the future me has normalized $5 million in the bank account? And that is living this life that I probably aspire for. What skill sets do they have? What energy do they bring into a room? How do they treat themselves? How do they carry themselves? What is their information diet? Who do they surround themselves with? What is their internal state like? All these different things, right? That is a process oriented, what you could call an internal locus of control. You have control over all of those things. What frustrates us is, as humans is when we 
we commit to something, call it a goal, a mission, a quest, an outcome, but then life, the nature of life is that we don't have control over 99.8% of shit. The only 0.2 things we, 0.2% of things we have control over is things that pertain to ourselves. And even a lot of that we don't have control over, right? But you do have control over what skill sets you focus on and your energy and how you're carrying yourself, some of these types of things. So to clarify, like, I think what I have learned to do, and I'm not saying that like my mind doesn't craft up these delusions of grandeur of the future will be so much better than the present. That happens to anyone with an ego and a prefrontal cortex, but I just don't give it much weight. The present is all you'll ever have. Today is the best day you will ever have. If you don't seize today, tomorrow will not be better. And I don't say that in a masculine sense of like David Goggins. I say that in the sense of all you can do is focus on enjoying the journey right now and maximizing what you're doing in each moment. And when you do that, I have found, cause it's been, I don't know, Je Jess, for example, has been with me long enough. When she started with us, we used to set goals and then I stopped. It's been probably three or four years. And um, I'm sure she loves that cause she, she had to completely shift how she does her, her job because she would come to me and be like, okay, we're trying to set yearly and quarterly goals. And I'm like, nope, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't set goals. So I think she had to learn to approach things a different way. But in those few years, um, I've accomplished, I mean, most of you came into my ecosystem in the last few years, right? You probably didn't know who I was before that. So things seem to be working out just fine. And what I've experienced from so many years of setting goals and to now not is that it really does help a lot with the perfectionism and, and just feeling bad about yourself and an inability to like relax or stop working or whatever, because with a goal, you're ingraining it over and over and over. Like I'm going to get to this thing and implied in that is that you don't have it and that you aren't already there versus the quantum perspective is I already am all that I will ever and can ever be. All I need to do is work on changing the radio station that I'm currently attuned to, to become a match for it. And so that's why I went into like skill sets and how you carry yourself and your energetics and all these different things to make that a little bit more practical of a conversation. So I hope something in there helped some of you. And um, also at the end of the day, like no one knows better than you what might be helpful for yourself, but it is real. This is not a, like when you come into this work, for many of us, it's going to be a big season of masculine. And with that can come the questioning yourself. Um, sometimes when I'm in heavy seasons of doing, my spiritual ego will compare me to who I used to be and will say that you've regressed or whatever it may be, right? Because I'm not spending all day in samadhi. <laughs> as if that's realistic. Um, but I've come to learn that the spiritual journey is a spiral, right? And so depending which area of that spiral you're at, it can feel like you're going backwards because maybe you are. But in the quantum, there is no direction, right? There's non-locality. So you can't actually go backward. But when you put on the lenses of our ego and you look at it, it looks like you're going backwards. It feels like you're going backwards. So that's where you kind of have to have this juxtaposition. Yeah, that's mainly what's coming up for me around that topic. The last thing I would say is I think most people in this group probably struggle with that and resonate with it. So for those of you that have these types of things come up, um, I think it would be really helpful and probably more beneficial than you might think to open up this kind of dialogue in, in Slack. And I'd be super curious to hear what what a lot of you think about that, how you approach it. So I think everyone's different. Um, I'm just sharing a little bit of my experiences with it but there's so much, there's so much there. I know Aaron would answer that question by talking about being through doing, which I'm sure you guys have heard him or myself speak on. And that's a really cool perspective as well. So I'll stop there. Hope that helps. Great.